Uh, um, so how much is that? So. Welcome to the Podcast Editor's Mastermind. You can find us and subscribe to the show at podcasteditorsmastermind.com. If you're joining us on Facebook, we would love to have your comments and your questions in the chat. And if you're not already part of the Facebook group, you could connect with us there. There will be a link for you in the episode notes. Now, as a podcast editor, you're probably not just an editor. You're also a business owner. And so you're responsible for more than just turning in edits. You're also responsible for leading your business, even if it's just you. And that means vision, purpose for what you're doing, a solid plan. That's the stuff we're going to be talking about tonight. But before we get into that, we're going to introduce ourselves. I'm Brian. You can find me at toptieraudio.com. I'm Carrie Caulfield. Eric, you can find me at yayapodcasting.com. And I have a new line of podcast editor t-shirts that you can find (laughs) (laughs) at the link you see on your screen. Pimp the gear. Yeah. (laughs) I'm Jennifer Longworth. You can find me at bourbonbarrelpodcasting.com or on social media at KY Podcasting. And our guest today is none other than Michael Jerry. He's a graduate of the Podcast Engineering School. And when you think about podcast production, he pretty much offers it all. Show planning, launch consultation, remote and on-site recording and engineering, full post-production, all of that kind of stuff and more. And you can find him at MIDI five productions at that's M I T I the number five and productions.com. So Jerry or Michael rather welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad to be here and don't worry about using my last name first. I got that from kindergarten through all of my education. Everybody always called me Jerry Michael. Are you serious? <laughs> I had no idea. Well, it's it's truly a pleasure to have you on here. We've been waiting for this for a while. We've been talking about trying to get you on, so we're super happy to have you here. And you had some stuff that you wanted to talk about, some things that you wanted to dig into. And then right before, before we, get in, we went on. Oh, yeah. Let's, so, yeah. So <laughs> behind the scenes in the green room, we were chatting and Michael said that he had a recent revelation is now a good time for you to share with us what you know today that you didn't know yesterday? Well, yeah, I was going to actually weave that into the conversation, but I was thinking about podcast engineering school and how did I even come to find out about podcast engineering school? The more I thought about it, the path sort of started with Hindenburg. As you remember, during that period, I was sort of trying to find a doll, like what one resonates with me the most, which one can I just sort of grab onto? And when I was doing research for Hindenburg, I actually came across your name and then you led me to Chris Kern via the episode that the two of you did on his show. And that's how I was introduced to Podcast Engineering School. So you're an integral part of my journey without even knowing about it. I honestly had no idea that that had happened. I just met you and I was like, this is a great guy. I want to know this guy better. So that's how it worked for me. Now, as we think about your production business, you've got some questions that we're going to get to. But first, can you maybe just share a little bit with us about what it is that you do, where you are in your business, how this is working for you so far? So as far on the business side, as you mentioned, I went to a podcast engineering school. That was September of 2019. And after that, the course really, Chris really fires you up. He's got a really good energy and knowledge about audio engineering and a true passion for wanting to help people. Starting a business has been something that was on my mind for quite some time. And even my journey into podcasting was, I really wasn't prepared for, but that's kind of another interesting story how that all started. After going or completing, podcast engineering school, then, you know, I just took the necessary steps to start my business. Also just sort of patterning myself after Chris Curran, wanting to focus more so with the businesses, the larger businesses, which is where a lot of my focus is in getting those clients. But in the interim, there's still a lot of work to be garnered just from the average person who wants to have a podcast launched or edited or or whatever. That's kind of where I'm at today. You mentioned that you're focused on the larger businesses. That's not something that I've focused on a whole lot. 
And so I'm wondering when you think about your, your marketing, your branding, your approach to those businesses, how do you approach those businesses? You know, it takes me back to my days of, I used to sell copiers. I first got into sales. This is back in uh, the early nineties, right? I had a territory in the middle of DC, a lot of embassies and, and major corporations. I have a, I'm kind of comfortable with talking to decision makers and business owners. It's sort of taken me back to those roots of my early days of sales and approaching businesses and really just presenting. I try to gather as much information as I can first because I don't want to just vomit information and not know exactly what it is that would be helpful to them. Right. So first, I need to gather as much information as possible and do a little digging on the company itself and and that sort of thing. That's my approach with businesses. I feel like as we all do, right, there are a lot of benefits for having your own podcast, especially if you are a business in the world that we live in. It gives you an opportunity to have your voice and showcase your talents and your experience and your wisdom and and all the things that that you bring uh, to the business world. So. And plus you can, you know, market your own stuff. And I mean, there's just so many things that you can do with your own podcast. So in terms of working with businesses, do you go out and actively seek them or do they come to you? Right now, I'm the pursuee. I'm on the hunt. <laughs> you are on the prowl. I'm in the jungle. I'm in the Serengeti. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> no, that's great. That's great. What do you think their general knowledge of podcasting is, do they get it? Do they get the value? Or is that something you got to continually define for them? There is an awareness, but not really an understanding of the details of of what goes into podcasting. There's a lot of curiosity about it, especially not only what is podcasting, but how does podcasting help in terms of profitability and the corporate mentality, right, is dollars first. Sometimes you just have the conversation of money and focus on value. And then, you know, we can come back to, you have to create value first before you can talk dollars and cents. So that's my approach with it. Uh, that That's good. Value before dollars and cents. <laughs> that's, a, that's a really good one. One of the things I'm wondering is like, if I think about a larger company, say a multi-billion dollar company, they probably have an entire team that could do something like this. There are probably some in that million to maybe $50 million a year that maybe they don't have a team that does this kind of thing, but maybe they also don't see the value. Do you find yourself having to go in and pitch not only the idea of a podcast, but also what they might do with a podcast in terms of content and things? Now, just to be clear, I haven't been fortunate enough to to talk to the big boys, you know, we're talking, you know, like you say, 50 million, you know, my approach would be, let's see what resources are available. How do they want to approach it? As you mentioned in my introduction, I have a a lot of equipment that I can bring to the set or to however we're going to do this. If they want to bring me on as a consultant, I'm willing to do that as well too. So I'm very open-minded with that and flexible but as long as we're they're willing to have an open dialogue about it, then I'm game. Nice. Jennifer, I feel like I've kind of been driving the conversation. I want to give you some. I'm st- just, I'm listening. I'm taking it in, man. <laughs> I'm like pitching businesses is something that I've considered and said I've wanted to do, but just have been not doing. So I'm like, well, <laughs> <laughs> you know, Chris was on here. He, talked a little bit about that. And Michael's here now talking a little bit about that and then reminding me that, oh, yeah, I was going to do that. Maybe I should do that. And then I went out and got a day job instead. So that's unfortunate. But maybe I need to circle back around. So just kind of listening in. And it's easy for me to tell people, well, a podcast is going to level you up in your industry. Because now you're not just a realtor, you're a realtor with a podcast or whatever industry you have to me. And I just work with a couple of realtors, so that was the easiest one. But beyond just leveling up and getting your name out there, are there any other like features and benefits of having a podcast that you like to present to people? There's a lot, but I think in the few conversations that I've had, I, ha- I haven't you know, had 
like tons and tons of dialogue with different businesses. But one of the main things that I do in my gathering of information is try and get a direction of what it is that the business wants to accomplish. And once you have that kind of idea, then you can just sort of run with it as far as what it is. Like you can get a a, a scope of what they're trying to accomplish once you have some ideas of what the business is about and the direction that they want to go in. So that's that's kind of my approach with it. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, do your homework first, basically. You mentioned talking to clients. Are you aware that Chris also has a challenge coming up for new clients and also for, are you going to be doing that? You know what? We've done that before. He had, oh man, this is several months ago. He's done something like that and and I participated in it. But yeah, so I'm I'm really looking forward to it. Chris always has some really good stuff. Yeah, I will try to find the link to that. I don't want to go digging for it right now, but I'll try and find the link to that so we can share that because that's something I'm planning to do as well. Last time I committed to do it, but it was right after, what was it, November, the 31 days of podcasting in November or something like that, because it's only 30 days and I was burnt out, so I didn't do it. But I'm I'm hopeful because I could, I could use another client or two myself, right? So that'd be a good one. You mentioned that you go in and you, you've you selected the businesses that you want to work with. My assumption is that comes from some kind of vision for what you want your business to be. Is that the case? There's so much on that plate when you talk about vision, at least well, Maybe we should mind. step back and just talk about what does vision mean to you first? The sight is what you see with your eyes, but vision is what you see in your mind. No one can see your vision except you. And working towards that vision is kind of the challenge, right? Because it's all in your head. I'm going to challenge you for a second. One of the things that I do for my business is I actually create a vision statement. It goes along with the mission statement. So the, the mission is kind of what you do every day, what your goal is. But A vision statement for me is like the impact of that goal. If mission is accomplished, then what's going to happen? What's that impact going to be? And I think your vision is thinking about when you do your job correctly and well, and you accomplish your mission, what is the result? When you accomplish it, what is the result? Yeah. Well, I'm just saying like hypothetic, like you don't have to answer. Obviously, you don't have to answer right now. <laughs> but I'm just saying that's a challenge for you to think about when your business is successful, right? When you're serving your clients and they're getting results and you're getting results, obviously, then what is the impact of all that? Not just on yourself and not just on your clients, but on the world at large. You know, that brings up an interesting point. I had written something down. I don't know what you just said reminded me of how a vision can tie into one's purpose. Right now we're getting into knowing yourself. That is a part. So the way I was taught to create these things, the mission and vision was to start with the values. At your core, what are your values? Who are you? What drives you? What moves you? What do you want? It's not an easy exercise to do. And it took me months just of actively working on it every day to kind of figure that out. And it's a constant reevaluation of that as well. I mean, because I feel like as I've been doing this business for a while now, I feel like my, my vision, my mission, my purpose has changed over the course of time. And that's why I'm doing the uh, Stony Brook podcast fellowship because I want to see what's what I could accomplish, what's out there. Like, what do I want to do next? Right. Because I don't, apparently I don't like to do one thing for an incredibly long time. Yeah. I understand that. I think, who are you? What are your values? That That's important and kind of real, like figuring out what your vision is going to, going to be. And I think kind of, it's almost like that working those, that the values and the vision first and then attacking the mission really, because that's, that's how you're going to get those, those pieces. Yeah. One thing that stuck with me, I I heard someone say, don't seek success, seek value and the success will come. And that kind of stuck with me. And I believe that that's one of the things, as you were mentioning, that 
I just sort of incorporated into my belief system and my values and, and character, because I do believe that if you have if you if you bring value, everything else will fall into place. Now, Steve Stewart would push back on the word value, <laughs> just like devil's advocate here, because who define like what is value and who defines it? Because he has a point when he says that it's an overused word and it's a word we often define for ourselves and then project onto other people. And I'm paraphrasing. Sorry, Steve. So what does that value mean to you? And what is that going to mean to the person like you're trying to deliver it to? Let's say that, Kara, you were the decision maker, okay, at the business that I'm proposing this podcast, then my way of determining value is through listening, right? I have to value for you at Carrie Productions is not going to be the same value that Jennifer Productions has, right? It's specific to that particular group or entity. And my one-on-one discussions with you I have to listen to find out, okay, what are we trying to create here together? What direction, you know, does Carrie want to go in? What things are important to her? And from that, then I can extract, okay, these are the things that are important. And those things that are important are what create value. And that's what I have to bring to the table, help, you know, extract that and then present it to you. So that, that would be my answer to that. It's not, obviously, it's not going to be the same for everyone. I think that's a great approach, though, to value, because then that takes the like, then then the person who you're trying to give value to is really the one who's defining it. And that that takes away that kind of like overused meaninglessness of it. (laughs) I mean, as Steve would argue, I know, just being devil's advocate. So and I think the point is well taken, right? The vision is just part of overall plan, right? And I think that's something that you're working on right now. Michael, I almost called you Jerry again, <laughs> something you're working <laughs> on right now um, with the the question of, okay, I've got all of these things that I want to do, all these different pieces. How do they all fit together? And I was wondering if you might like to talk a little bit about where your plan is right now, like how all the pieces are fitting together. And maybe if there are any gaps or questions that you have as you're trying to to piece it all together. You know, for me, one of the things that Carrie mentioned is that if things changed for her, like her vision changed. And I see that happening with me, my vision of work or how I interpret work has changed. You know, I was in corporate America for, for decades and I'm not a corporate America person. I just don't fit the mold. I like to do what I like to do my way when, you know, I'm working in sales and they're changing my compensation plan because I'm making too much money. I'm making more than the manager, which happens often, right? Then they change it. So now I have to work harder just to make the same amount of money. And now I have to do things differently to make money. I said, okay, this is enough. I had to, at some point, take myself out of corporate America and then reevaluate what work is for me. So now work is doing something that I enjoy and on my own terms. I don't want to work 40 hours a week sometimes, and I don't. I like to work to enhance life. And I don't know if this maybe sounds kind of millennial, you know, (laughs) but the things that are important to me really don't center around the 40 to 60 hour work week. So me reevaluating work is working enough to do the things that are that are enjoyable for me and my family. And if it's spending three months living out of an RV traveling, that's what I want to work towards. I want to reach that goal. And once I have that money, then let's go do it and let's have fun. Not work 365 days so that I can take a two week vacation. That's where I am. And and that's where things have changed for me. And I'm trying to, I'm really trying to work towards that. You know, I see that, you know, people, nowadays are living life differently. And I hope I'm not, this really isn't, uh, you know, kind of podcasty, but, <laughs> but uh, I'm trying to answer your question, Brian. My outlook of what work means to me has changed. How are you designing your business to reach that goal? 
You guys are going to figure out for me. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you don't want us to be the consultants that come in and tell you what to do and then walk away and just say, well, <laughs> our plan would have worked if you would have done it right. No, no, <laughs> that's not, we don't want to do that to you. But I mean, getting you thinking about, about what that design looks like. I mean, I think that there's a decision that every podcast editor needs to make between pricing and scale. Or is that the right way to say that? So like, I guess boutique, a smaller operation, and a larger operation that does volume, basically. Higher prices, lower amount of clients, obviously. You're going to make more money doing a little bit less work. And then, of course, you could be a large agency that doesn't charge all that much. I mean, that's that's just what I've encountered I think in my journey is having to make that decision. Like, am I going to work with a lot of clients at a lower price and like manage large teams to do all the editing? Or am I going to have a smaller team and manage less clients at a higher price? What is your approach to that? I'm wondering, Michael, like, where do you fall in there? Less clients more money. Less clients, more money. And I'm not saying I'm not saying you can't make a lot of money with a lot of client like a lot of clients, but you're at a lower price, but you have to do volume, right? So okay. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I don't want to offend anybody. It, thus, you know, sort of my direction of focusing on businesses, you know, larger, you know, mid to larger businesses. Like I have a small circle in my life. And that sort of fits me. So if I could have a small set of clients. Now we're talking ideally five, really clients, maybe six. That would be ideal for me. And just, I just want to focus on my group. I'm not looking for, you know, 50 to 60 clients. And, but listen, if life sort of works itself out that way, then like, I'm not going to shock at it, but Ideally, yeah, that's what I like. I like to have, you know, the five, four or five clients and mid to larger businesses. And that's my bread and butter. As you were talking, I was reminded of one of the things that Tanner Campbell shared in the podcast editors group on Facebook, because I have a tendency to always think of the problem that I'm solving based on the value to me. So I edit your podcast and the going rate for podcast editing is about this. But his comment was, the value of what you do isn't determined by its value to you. It's determined by the value to the person you're providing the solution for. And a person for whom the same solution is worth more will pay more. So if you think about saving somebody time or producing that show for them, that company or that person that really values that will be willing to pay what it takes to get that done. And it's not taking advantage of them. You have to provide the service, but I think you're on the right path. And this is still mindset work that I'm doing. Like I'm still serving kind of that low to mid tier client. I'm not serving the $5 on Fiverr group, but I'm also not serving the $500 or a thousand dollars an episode full production. I applaud you for going after that. And I keep wanting to find out how you're finding those clients. <laughs> the more information I get, I'm more than happy to share with you. But, um, you know, that's, that's what I'm working towards is I want those the five clients that that'll just put me in that sweet spot. So in support these five clients, are you doing everything from the, you know, sitting on the call with them producing their episode, their recording to publishing the podcast or is it, is there anything you don't do? My strengths are, are not with some of the administrative aspects of it. I would do whatever needs to be done. I know that's kind of a generic answer, but if they're paying me money that I'm comfortable with, then I'm going to do what needs to be done. Like that's all part of the the parse process and, and the dialogue when you sit down and, and talk with these people to find out what the vision is for the podcast and with the company. You have those discussions as far as, okay, this is what I'm willing to do. This may be something that I outsource because it's not really a strength of mine. Or I could just say, hey, let me send you to this person because I know that they're really good at this or developing websites or um, like video. I'm not that is not a strength for me. 
So if you want to incorporate video, hey, let me put you in touch with top tier audio because Brian is excellent with that. That's my approach towards it. I really just want to highlight again, because I didn't the first time, and I think it's so important, is you talk about asking your clients or your potential clients questions, what they need. And I always approach a, a client consultation call where if I do too much talking, like I know that I'm going to lose the sale if I talk too much. Because it's really about having them open up and tell you what they need. So it's it's basically I'm interviewing them. And I think that is so critical to like understanding what they want, what they need, and and how you can get, you know, figuring out how to give it to them and charging them well for it. <laughs> so I just want to highlight that. One of the things that I had to learn through my sales process, it's okay not to get the deal. Just be honest in your conversations and authentic. I can't stress that enough. Don't oversell your soul for the sake of a dollar. It's just not worth it. If they say, look, I'm going to go with someone else. At least you had that experience. I learned from it. That's how I look at it. But that's my take on it. One of the things I'm kind of wondering, because you've you've talked about the planning and the vision, I think still somewhat in transition as well. Does that mean that you're juggling multiple things all at the same time? Yeah, I still Uber because I, I like the, that's kind of like a, a gold mine of, of opportunity for, well, the, the podcast that we were talking about before we started the show that I have, like, it's, it's such a, an interesting, well, I like people. I like driving. It's just a, like a gold mine of conversations, having these dialogue with people from all over the world. And I'm just in one city, but I've met and talked with people from all over the world. I always joke with people and I tell them, whenever you pray, if you're the praying type, make sure you're specific because I would always pray like, oh man, I want to meet people from all over the world. And he's like, okay, there you are in your hometown, in your car. And I'm like, wait a minute. The plan was to go traveling and meeting people from all over the world, not driving my little car around the city. So be specific in your prayers, please. When it comes to all of that, how do you decide what to do when? Because I think there's the day job, if you will. There's working on the business. There's also working in the business. You've got all those hats. How are you prioritizing what gets done? Uh, it's a struggle. It really is. So I bought a, a planner, a daily planner. And one of the things that I'm forcing myself to do is create new habits. If I can create new habits, then it'll lead to like a good routine. By creating these habits, I've started writing things down. And so if like at on Sundays, I'll just sort of go through the week, like what has to be addressed this week. And then on the bigger picture, like on, on the top of my uh, planner, It'll say like goals for the month. Like, what do I want accomplished this month? And so when I take the overall month and then break it down by week, you know, that's what I've been doing recently to just sort of keep me focused and on track. That's been a challenge for me as well. I, I also work full time and I'm building a business. So I'm working on the business and in the business. I've not done a great job with the planner thing. I found that it was a lot of administrative overhead for me, but those habits are critical. And I'm wondering, what are the specific habits that you're focused on right now? Well, let's see. Get out the planner. <laughs> and, and do you have a particular kind of planner you like to use just in case people like planners? This I got from uh, Staples. It's just a planner. And then, you know, it's just lined just a lot. It has days of the week. And then on the other side, it's just a, an area for, for note taking. But that's what I do. Like, you know, it's like this week was kind of preparing for this show. And also uh, the two main priorities were this show and then working on episodes of the podcast that I want to get launched by October 1. So that's that's what I'm working on. I'm just going to show that that's, that's literally like my system. I'm holding up my notebook for listeners who can't say, but I literally 
I just, uh, let me show you. You have lots of little sticky flags on there, Carrie. Yeah, so I can always find my page. And different colors mean different things. So, like, my pink is my weekly. And my yellow is course stuff. And my blue is clients. And then my orange and green are kind of money things, like business and money things. But yeah, I just write the week on top of the page and then make an episode to-do list, like all the things that need to be edited for the week. Who's editing them? Like if my team's editing them, when I'm going to review everything. And then I just have a running to-do list. So I keep it. I don't put goals, though, because... <laughs> <laughs> I don't get that far. Now, now, what about the white kitty? What's the white kitty playing there? Yeah, he's just moral support, right? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes he makes an appearance in the episode. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. It's a great background. Uh, <laughs> and headrest, I guess, where he's sitting now, Yeah, right? he's a big cat. A oh, bad mic technique on me. But yeah, he's a, he's a nice little pillow. Well, I'll just say, uh, jump in here. And there's been discussion recently in the Podcast Editors Club about... You know, your tracking systems are using Airtable. Are you using, that's the only one I can think of right now, Trello, Asana, all these things. But seeing you with the planners, I'm like, well, that's more inclined to what I need to do. But I just have a calendar that I scribble things on when I'm done. And I have pieces of paper laying around. (laughs) I'm like, that's not good. I might have to, I think I have a planner around here. So you've inspired me, Michael and Carrie, to go find my planner and start working it. Yeah, I would say just what works best for you because the Trello and I'm not ready for that. It's just too much for me right now. But the the planner is something that's simple that I can stick with. It fits right here in my hand so I can carry it with me. And like I said, I just I break down my these habits that I've just started creating into just simple sentences. One sentence is for the month. And then what do I want to get done this week? Just keep it that simple. So if I could, I think I'd like to ask one more question about priorities and time management. And it's, I think it's one that you shared as well. As an editor, sometimes I will find myself three and a half hours into an edit on a 30 minute show because I just can't get the track to sound the way I want to. Maybe it's a garbage Zoom recording or something like that. How do you decide (laughs) when you're spending too much time on a track. Listen, Chris was just helping me with (laughs) this yesterday. For example, what what he was helping me with yesterday, like he was like pretty much like, dude, just chill out, relax. Because I kept hearing like the, the boxiness of this person's voice. And, you know, like once you hear it, you can't unhear it. It just wouldn't go away. So one of the things that, that I'm, I've started doing is like someone, I can't remember the person's name, but every hour they just take a break. Like I have a sit stand desk. So I make sure that I'll have it stand up and I'm not sitting. So that's my indication. Okay. Let me take a break, take off the headphones and, you know, just five minutes, nothing, and then come back to it. You have to just for me, be aware of how I'm spending my time. And it's odd because one thing I did this week, which I had never done, I got out my business cards and I set them on my desk. And for some reason, that helped me focus more because it reminded me, I don't know, subconsciously, it's just like, this is a business that I'm running. I need to focus. That little thing just helped me stay focused this week. And make sure that I was managing my time so that if I found myself getting distracted, I said, okay, all right, let's get back on track here. You know, I'm not saying everyone should whip out their business cards and throw them on their desk. It was just that little bit of a change helped me to to just sort of recenter myself. I think you're right. It does remind you that you're doing something seriously. So get off Facebook, right? <laughs> <laughs> But not right now, because you're watching us, and we want you. Yeah, right, right. Not right now. definitely stay. And you shouldn't be working anyway. It's late. But yeah, like a specific time for social media. If you start your day, maybe 10 o'clock is your time. You start your day at 8 o'clock, and then at 10, you know, from 10 to 10.30 or 10 to 11, or however much time you want to give yourself, that's your social media time. And then after that, you're done. No more. As you get busier, as you grow your business... 
that's really important, like having that social media time, because I can have Facebook and there are times where it's like, ding, 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 ding. Like people are messaging me. I've got like, so I have to like schedule when I'm going to check my email, when I'm going to check my Facebook messages, my Instagram, like all those different places of connection, because I know personally, I can only focus on one task and one task at a time and do something well. I have to like really cut and there's sometimes I don't I don't say anything. That's why sometimes I get really talkative because I just like spend all day listening and then <laughs> and then I get to you guys and it's like ah I think that's really important to kind of remember that you're setting these habits now so that when your time is really there's a lot of demands on it, a lot more demands on it as your business grows. You want to have those habits already. So you're not feeling like you're being pulled in 500 different directions at one time. One of the things that actually two of the things that I've done one, I just recently learned that the Facebook app, at least on iOS has the ability to set times when it's not available and it will actually cover up the screen and you have to tell it, I want to deviate from my plan. So I implemented that so that I don't get all those notifications and stuff. And it's kind of funny that like the world's most addictive software is now giving you the ability to control your addiction, but (laughs) but whatever, for whatever that is. The other thing I do is I put my phone on do not disturb from like 1030 until 630 AM or something like that. And my most productive time is between 530 AM and 7 AM. So what happens then is I don't get any notifications during that time. So I just don't get that distraction. That's just what I've done. And I was super happy to find that I could tell Facebook where to stick it <laughs> for some limited limited points of time. W- one of the things I did want to talk about, though, because you, you kind of breezed by this, but you said you've got a podcast launch coming up. Would you tell us a little bit about what you've got going on with that? Yeah. So this goes back to my uh, conversations with my Uber riders, right? I've had some really, really interesting discussions with people. So the the way this this works is, let's say, Brian, I pick you up. We have a really great conversation in the car. Most of these trips are short, right? So you're not going to get a whole lot of dialogue out of a five to seven mile trip. But what I do is my business card and say, hey, listen, I really enjoyed our conversation. And if you're interested in sort of carrying this dialogue on, here's what I do. And then I give them a short you know, a little overview of, of what I've done with some other people. And then they reach out to me and we'll, or we'll exchange email information and I'll reach out to them or whoever reaches out first. After that, this is pre COVID. Now we would meet at the library because there's, we've got some really awesome libraries here and a few of them have sound booths. And so I can just go to the library for free and I'm already in a sound treated room. Awesome. Now we'll sit down and talk for about an hour. The first half of the show, you know, I really like to just sort of draw the person out and introduce them and what their life experiences have been about. And then the second half of the show is really just sort of promoting them or their business, whatever it is that they're sort of into. Now I've had a gentleman who suffers from depression and bipolar open up to me, a guy who started a business. It's called uh, play and exploration, helping companies to get back to their creative side. I've talked with some educators. I mean, some really interesting conversations I've had with people. I condensed this into a 45 minutes to an hour conversation, and I'm launching that October 1st. What's the show name and where can we find it so we can send people there? <laughs> I guess that would be helpful. Wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <It's>, uh... <laughs> I mean, you know. <laughs> right, right. Uh, the name of the show is Drive Time Conversations, and it's going to be on, you know, I'm going to hit all the platforms, you know, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google. But yeah, Drive Time Conversations, that's the name of it. Is there a mailing list we could sign up to or anything like that? Or I'm putting some pressure on you right now. <laughs> you know, that's something I, I need to we'll say. Oh, um. No, I don't. I'm sorry. <laughs> no. It's like the way we've been releasing these, though, recently, uh, by the time you're listening to this, it may already be live and you can just go subscribe. Yeah. And everybody knows how to Google, right? I mean, come on. 
your podcast editors. Let's go. Get Googling. <laughs> <Let's> go. <laughs> like your Google cannot be broken. You can right? put that on your T-shirts, <laughs> Carrie. What? Your Google can't be broken. Thank you. I'll put the, add that to my list. I've got to add that to my uh, the top of the list of for what to do for next week. Get your mailing list. And yeah. Yeah. I asked that, but I am also the absolute worst at my newsletter. Like even for the course, I am struggling to keep it up to date, like keep, (laughs) keep newsletters in the queue. Uh, So if anybody wants to do a newsletter challenge with me, uh, I'd be happy to do that. <laughs> yeah, maybe you should set it up for us. <laughs> yeah, Carrie, and all your spare time. Let me just add that to my list right here. I mean, you've got a <laughs> team. Get out my notebook. So, Michael, we've talked about an, most of the th- stuff that I think you had on there, but I'm wondering, is there anything else that you'd like to talk about or maybe any questions you have for us? Man, the, the pressure's on. I just, you know, in the moment, the, the mind just says, psych. I had questions and my mind was like, nah, not not right now. So that's a no. That's a hard no. (laughs) That'll be a hard no, Brian. (laughs) I think your homework really is to think about those that values, vision and mission that you have. I think that going through that journey would be really helpful for you. And I think like that exercise, like every morning, think about who are you at your core and like, Five words that would describe what motivates you, what is important to you. And then ask the people in your lives, like five words they would use to describe you, which is one thing I did that was really helpful because that that gets you thinking, where are your roots in this world, essentially? And then what do you want to do with that? Right? What's the vision for that? And how are you going to get there? So it's just like a morning exercise, just, you know, five, 10 minutes. Think about that and it'll come. Well, my lawyers advise me that I can't answer that question, Brian. Let's do Chris's question. What if your roots aren't of this world? Well, I didn't specify which world they had to be in. So like, <laughs> the, it's totally up to you. I mean, if you think that you're an alien, you know, great. <laughs> What kind of alien are you, right? What? <laughs> Why'd you come to this planet? I don't know, but uh... <laughs> I, I know I'm not supposed to ask yes or no questions, but I'm going to do it anyway. The show that you're launching, Drive Time Conversations, does that fit into your business? That's going to be under the umbrella of Mighty Productions. So, yes. But <laughs> Well, it's also a demonstration of what you can do, right? What you can do with the podcast. Do you think there's any lead generation with that also? Yeah. You know, like I said, I, I like, um, you know, what's also been helpful too with, with doing the Uber when you talk about lead generation is some of the conversations that I've had with people, you know, I've been handing out my business cards to different people who own businesses that are, you know, because on the weekends you're getting, well, pre COVID, you're getting all kinds of folks. And a lot of business owners you know, want to get out and just release, right? So it's an opportunity to to uh, self-promote. But uh, yeah, I take advantage of the opportunity to do that when it's reasonable. I don't go out of control with it. I'm going to say one more thing about your podcast being a lead generator. You can sponsor your own podcast, so that your podcast is brought to you by Mighty Productions and then, you know, whatever your your tagline is. And you can do a mid-roll with that. And like, do you like the way I sound? Do you like what we're doing here? I can do that for you, too, or whatever. So that's, you know. I like that. Yes, absolutely. Something I didn't do for my podcast, but I think everybody else should do it. <laughs> we don't do it for this podcast. But <laughs> So, Michael, one more question that we like to ask all of our guests is, how did you find your first client? The very first one. It's funny because when when I first looked at that question, I was telling Brian that what popped in my head was that I was my first client. When I decided to start this podcast, the creative process, buying of equipment, the engineering, producing and editing of the show those are all things that I do for clients. I had to learn that for myself. 
I consider myself to be my first client because I've got that experience of creating, hosting, producing, and engineering my own podcast. I also think that helps you understand your client at a deeper level because you've gone through the process. It's one thing to say, oh, we'll record in a great environment and use good bank. T-. It's another thing to actually like experience what that's like in application because even we get stuff wrong, right? So having that, that gives you a little bit more patience and understanding with your client and, and helps you serve them better, I think. You know, that made me think of something. And the process of me creating these different episodes, I've gone through a lot of different equipment in that time. So I started out with a Tascam DR40 and a Samsung Q2U. That was what I used for my very first podcast. The library had condenser or they have condenser mics. And I had no idea the difference between a dynamic and condenser mic at the time. With my first guest, he's on a condenser and I'm on a dynamic. I had an interface, a Behringer 404 HD interface. And then I moved to the Rodecaster Pro. And so what I was thinking, and this is what I want your guys input on, is because I'm just interested in audio, I was thinking about somehow just sort of tying in whether, you know, maybe like at the end of an episode that these were the devices that the show was recorded on. And look, you don't have to have high end equipment to get started. But look, this is what this show was recorded on. And, you know, how did it sound to you? This show was recorded on an interface and this one was on the Rodecaster Pro. I don't know, but just something that crossed my mind. What do you guys think? I like it. I wish some of my clients would tell me what they're recording on without me having to ask them, what are you recording on? Uh, (laughs) Because I have a studio here in Lexington, Kentucky, and I had some people record there recently and at another show again. I'm like... (gasps) This sounds so much better than the other recordings because it's in the sound treated room with the Roadcaster Pro and oh my goodness. So I think it would be interesting to hear, hear that. I mean, maybe the average person wouldn't care, but I care. I think it's cool. I mean, even just like in an end roll credits and thank you for listening. And today's episode was recorded on blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I did. So with my show, Just Podcasting, I actually put that in the show notes. I thought about doing it in the audio, but frankly, I was just lazy and I didn't. Uh, (laughs) So I put it in the show notes and I put my thoughts about the particular equipment. I put what I struggled with that episode, you know, and putting it together. So if you ever read the show notes to that show, they're kind of fun. I mean, I have, you know, I put a lot of like technical notes in it. So including the geese phenomenon that we have here that you can't get out of recordings. I would think that if you think your audience will care, then go ahead and put it in. If you think they won't care, then maybe not. Like if it distracts from the core message of what your guests are sharing and the core purpose of that show, then. So I'm going to be devil's advocate. I don't care. I want it. It's your show. Do what you want. I don't care. So the people who listen that far, like I would maybe put it after like maybe your outro as like a fun thing for like your super fans, right? Because there's going to be a percentage of them who are going to want to emulate you or be inspired to podcast, you know, in some way. And here's your cross promotion stuff too. This was recorded by Mighty Productions using a blah, blah, blah. Right. And then who knows, maybe some of these audio companies will like what you're doing. It when, when you um, nicely tag them on social media saying shout out to so and so on the latest episode of drive time, because this is what we used. Um, maybe they'd be like, Hey, this is cool what you're doing. We'd like to give you some money for that. Or free equipment for that or something. You guys are so smart. (laughs) You know, I'm smart for other people, right? I don't do this. (laughs) (laughs) There's a consistent theme here. (laughs) This has been great. Unfortunately, we're going to have to draw it to a close because this old guy has to go to bed soon. But it's been great having you on here. I do want to mention that we've talked about business plans. And our next guest is actually going to be Mark Deal, who put together the podcast editor Academy training for business models. We're actually going to be recording on a Tuesday at September 22nd. That's odd for us because we're normally on a Thursday. 
couldn't work out the dates. So that's what it is. So if you have questions about business models or business plans, you're going to want to add that one to your calendars. And if somebody is interested to be a guest on the show, Carrie or Jennifer, who wants to tell them how to be a guest? I'll tell them how to be a guest. If you would like to be a guest on the Podcast Editor Mastermind, please go to podcasteditormastermind.com and click Be a Guest. We had someone message us via Facebook earlier wanting to be a guest, and we told them to go to podcasteditormastermind.com slash be a guest. So that's what you need to do. Yeah. And I don't know how to work Facebook Messenger really well for pages. So definitely use that form because I know if Jennifer hadn't have seen it, I would have never... I saw it and I was like, I'm going to mess this up. So let's, let's not deviate from the process. We're going to get it all jacked yeah. up. Um, all right. so, Please don't confuse us. <laughs> Michael, um, thank you so much for being here. It's been an absolute pleasure for those watching or listening. If you want to find him, mighty5audio.com. That's M-I-T-I, the number five audio.com is the website. You can find him at Twitter at mighty underscore audio. So Michael, thank you so much. And to close out the show, I'm Brian Ensminger. You can find me at toptieraudio.com. I'm Carrie Caulfield. Eric, you can find me at yayapodcasting.com. You can find my great teas at yayapodcasting.com backslash shop. I'm Jennifer Longworth at bourbonbarrelpodcasting.com or KY Podcasting. Not appearing in this episode is Daniel Abendroth. He is out partying. And this is where we have our awkward pause, right? <laughs> I didn't yeah. even get an invitation to the party. Yeah. Roth, uh, Roth. Oh, I forgot. Roth Media. Wait, Roth Media. <laughs> yes, Roth Media. Audio. So, <laughs> thanks everybody for sticking with us till the crazy end. <laughs> yeah, and thank you, Chris, for hanging out with us. <laughs> yeah, in the chat. Thank you so much, Michael. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Bye, bye, guys. Ah, uh, so um, how much is that? Um. I, um, uh, um uh-huh. Um, um, so, um, um. Uh. <laughs> <laughs>